to be or not to be? That is the question you've got to ask yourself when staring at this gun in my hand. What's going on here? Who are you? Falk Ziljan, how have you been? We met at the NRMA gun giveaway. Remember it was accidentally advertised as a gun buyback event? I remember that. You're uh, G.I. Jake, right? Yeah. Well, no. G.I. Jake is the name of the whole group. I'm one of the leaders, Crank. You guys having some kind of war game here in Hex Pantry? No, we're engaging in a little urban pacification. There's been some terrorist activity in the area. We're doing routine checks of everyone in this vicinity, kind of separating the wheat from the chaff, you know? What was the terrorist activity? I hadn't heard about anything. We got reports someone had a banner hanging brazenly from the side of an apartment building that read, Peace. You can see it right there in that alley. That's why we started by clearing this building. Yes, I see. Peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Crank, that's been hanging up since last Christmas. Still, talking about peace shows disrespect for our troops, as if we're wrong to go to war. It's practically giving aid and comfort to our enemy. What enemy? Whichever enemy. Pick one. The next enemy. And who are all these guys with guns wearing tights and huge ruffles around their necks? I thought one of those avant-garde stage plays was pulling their audience out onto the streets, or they were doing theater in the park or something. They're the newest additions to the G.I. Jake team. Strike Force Shakespeare. See, we had some success with the action figures, toy guns, stuff like that. We gave away whistles when kids sent in box tops from Prima Week. Plus there was the G.I. Jake Big Little Books, the G.I. Jake Cliffhanger Serial. At some point, kids with money are able to collect all the action figures. To keep them buying more, we give them a new round of characters to collect. One of our board members at Hasselbro pointed out how Shakespeare's real popular on Broadway lately, on account of that guy Orson Welles doing a bunch of those shows. Sure, I loved his Halloween show. So there's our theme. The next generation of G.I. Jake characters are all nicknamed after Shakespeare characters. But of course, with our war angle on everything. Here, I'll introduce you around. That's King Kong Lear. Hello. This is the Scottish player. Hello. Lady Macbeth. Uh. Our lawyer said somebody else had trademarked Puck, so this guy is Pucker. Yeah. Here's Caliban. What's up, guy? That gun in your hand looks totally savage. Over there's Horatio. Now, that one was a stroke of genius. We knew there'd be complaints about the name, so we manufactured a limited run of 500 Horatio action figures without releasing them to stores. We leaked the story that they were in development, so a lot of outrage would build. Then we'll hold on to them for five or ten years. By that point, collectors might pay ten clams each. They'll be like forbidden fruit. Officially, the company never sold any, but everybody on the inside will be raking in the dough. Your marketing team is unbelievable. Thanks. They really are. This here's Prosperophilia. She's what the carnies call a half and half. The action figure has a lever on the back. One minute you're looking at Prospero, an old man with a beard casting spells that sink ships. Hello. Click the lever and it switches to Ophelia, a gloomy young woman who's been rejected by the Prince of Denmark. Hello. This guy over here was going to be based on Coriolanus, but we couldn't come up with a code name that kids wouldn't emphasize the last part, anus. If you need a war angle, you could call him Marine Coriolanus. I like it, but it doesn't solve the anus problem. Oh, yeah, I forgot. The one leading those kindergarten kids on a string is Juliet. We thought she'd be a powerful addition to the team. It turns out she's a normal 14-year-old girl. Rumor was she could fire solar blasts from her hands. That was just a, what do you call it, a metaphor. You know, Juliet is the sun. And over there smashing in the windows are Hotbox and Anias Ninja. What do those names have to do with Shakespeare? Nothing. Every strike force needs a flamethrower guy and a ninja. I get the Shakespeare gimmick, but why are you putting civilians in the back of trucks and taking them away? I'll let Strategic Hamlet explain it to you. He's the point man on that part of the operation. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Ziljan. To be honest, I had mixed feelings about putting civilians in concentration camps, but I realized the key to it all. When other countries put civilians in concentration camps, it's a horrible atrocity. When our side puts civilians in concentration camps, it's a matter of national security. Concentration camps? I know, that's not the approved term. We call it a strategic hamlet. See, when your enemy uses guerrilla tactics, they don't wear military uniforms and they can blend in with the local population. Our boys can't tell which ones are good and which ones are bad. So we move all the civilians in the area to a new village that's secure. We station guards around it, fences, barbed wire, 
No one gets in or out without us knowing. That new place is the strategic hamlet. Now, if any terrorists or enemies are trying to hide among the civilians, they're at a disadvantage. They're surrounded by our forces. We can search them for weapons at any time. We can search their homes. Everybody's safe that way. Why would anyone agree to move there? For one thing, we can guarantee their safety inside. That's the carrot. On the other side, there's the stick. Everywhere outside the strategic hamlet is open season. People who refuse to live inside are assumed to be active members of the enemy force, or at least collaborators. Everywhere outside is a free fire zone. Hold your fire, free fire zone. I wasn't calling for you, I was just explaining the idea of it to this man. Oh, sorry. I told the marketing guys that name was going to cause problems. Another code name that has nothing to do with Shakespeare. His concept works really well with strategic Hamlet, though. Excuse me, I need a word with the twins. Hey, guns and butter. I know you verify the ammo and the hardware. Do we have a three-month supply of food for all these deliberately displaced persons? I'm guns, she's butter. He was talking to me, obviously. Colonel Crank, can you explain to me why an elite strike force operative with a code name such as myself would get assigned as a supply sergeant? Ain't that what we got contractors for? Sir, I have a question. What is it, guns? Could I have some more guns? Requisition some from your sister. Sir, kiss my grits. I should really get going. I heard reports of inhuman screeching in the area, and I need to investigate. Perfectly understandable. I know you got things to do. Here come a few more. The guy piloting powered armor over there is mech ado about nothing. Hello. Get it? Mech? Mech ado about... I got it. Uh, that portly fellow is a jet pilot. Falstaff Derburner. Woof. Yeah, that codename isn't set in stone. And speaking of woof, uh, we were going to have a kind of monster squad, but we only came up with two codenames for it. The pale guy with fangs is Richard the Thirst, and the hairy one with fangs is As You Like and Throw Bit. These ladies with blades are the Merry Knives of Windsor. Hey, Shug. And we got a bare knuckle boxer codenamed Pound of Flesh. Hey. It's been great seeing you. Thanks for the intros. Really got to go. I got gotcha. you. Good seeing you. We'll check your 12 next time. Okay, sure. One Adam 12 right back at ya. Hey, Wordsmith, am I glad to see you. You know about that military fiasco over in Hex Pantry? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Can you pass a message to some bad guys for me? Depends who it is. The World Crime Syndicate. Whoa, like Miss Patriarchy and Meritocracy and Colonel Racism? I don't interact with them directly, but I know a guy who knows the guy. Good. These G.I. Jakes have gone completely off the rails. I don't have the firepower to take them all down myself. Maybe we can draw them away from hassling civilians if we can find them some bigger fish to fry. Tell the World Crime Stooges to make some noise outside of town. Maybe that farmhouse where the defenders of the hearth had a standoff with them a while back. I know the place. Way out past where Verf Street turns into Farner Road. Yeah, whatever. Turns into gravel out there. Yeah, I can pass that along. They won't exactly be motivated if I tell them the request came from you. They'll think you're jerking them around. Tell them the place is my parents' old farmhouse. I leave it in rundown condition so no one will find my secret headquarters under the basement. Yeah, that might do it. If they hit it with a bunch of mortars or artillery, it'll clear off the facade and they'll be able to see all my high-tech equipment. Hell, tell them it's a safe house I share with Defenders of the Hearth and Emerald Ashbore and whoever else you can think of. I could say you're working with Nick Carper, the Black Terror, Matt Ban. Oh, I hate that guy. But yeah, whatever. You get the picture. Ooh, hey, better yet, we'll get a real spectacle going. Who's that agent that works with Black Terror and the Phantasm and all those guys? Gary Mackinder. Yeah. Tell him to get all his hero clients over there and they can ambush the World Crime Syndicate. They'll jump at the chance. You're doing this to distract G.I. Jakes away from their urban pacification plan in the city, right? What if all these heroes finish off the villains before G.I. Jakes get there? Are you kidding? Those schmoes? Not a chance. And that was how Falk Ziljan's well-intended plan ignited what would come to be known as the Secret Wars on Critical Hearths. But that's a story for another time. Right now, it's time to hear from our sponsor, Power. When Benjamin Franklin flew his kite during a thunderstorm... Raw, unadulterated, glorious power. No apologies, no excuses. Might makes right. Take what you can get. Why rage against the machine and be crushed under its wheels when you can rage with the machine? Rage for the machine. Do what you want for a change. After all, why not? Why shouldn't you keep it? Dad, are you all right? Fire all of your guns at once and explode into space. 
dead? Yeah. Why not try power today? Strike Force Shakespeare, episode 37 of This Gun in My Hand, was pacified urbanely by Rob Norther. Visit thisgunninmyhand.blogspot.com for credits, show notes, information on how to subscribe, and to buy my books, such as Little Heist in the Big Woods and Other Revisionist Atrocities. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the gleaming of this gun in my hand.